Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking all about how to smoke cleanse your house. So this video is video one of two, all about how to cleanse your house and the different techniques for doing it. So today we're gonna to be talking very specifically about smoke cleansing, and then in another video, we're gonna be talking all about non-smoke cleansing or the smoke alternatives that you can use if you can't use smoke for one reason or another. But today we're gonna to be talking all about smoke cleansing, probably the most well-known form of spiritual cleansing that most people have heard of. Now, of course, every culture and every tradition is going to have a slightly different method of house cleansing. So today we're just going to be talking about the most popular and the most well-known forms of smoke cleansing that you might want to add into your own cleansing routine. So the first question is, what is cleansing? And why do we need to cleanse a house? Of all things, why a house? So cleansing is essentially a spiritual practice that assists in removing negative or unwanted energies from a space, person, object, or item. And it can also be used to assist in dislodging minor spirits and minor spirit attachments. Now it isn't necessarily used as a replacement to much larger spirit removal techniques, but it can be used as well as, as kind of a first start for kind of getting rid of any of these unwanted energies and spirits that you might have lingering around. Now you can cleanse a lot of different items. A lot of people will know about personal cleanses where you cleanse yourself of any excess unwanted energies, spirit attachments, and so on. You can also cleanse items and objects. Often this is done before spell work and ritual or after you've bought something from somewhere that has not very nice energies. But a lot of people do undertake house cleansings. Now houses or properties are another thing that people will often cleanse. And this is because they often contain the energies that are felt or held within them. And so a lot of the time you can have lots of stale, built up energy within that space or negative energy being brought in from day to day life. So whereas we might go out into the world and bring negative energies back in again, we might cleanse ourselves, but that energy might then be brought into the space simply by us walking into it. And so you'll often find that when people buy new properties or every few months, they might do what's known as a house cleanse, which is essentially a technique on helping to remove or rid negative energies from that space. So if there is illness in that space, or if there's a lot of people coming and going, there's a lot of arguments, disagreements, fights, it can be a really good technique to every few months really help to cleanse that space, remove any of that clogged up energy and you might find that it helps lift this kind of heaviness that you might feel within a property that can then lead to more arguments more disagreements spirit attraction and all this kind of thing that you might not want within a place so a lot of people will cleanse when they move in it's often a really good technique and they'll also do what's known as a spring clean or an energetic cleanse probably at least once a year usually around in bulk or star time to really assist in kind of shifting that energy from the winter to to help replace it with the new energy in the coming year. Across the world, there are so many different kinds of cleansing. Every culture and tradition is gonna have their own unique way of doing it. Today, we're gonna to be talking specifically about smoke cleansing in many of its most popular forms. Of course, I'm not gonna be able to go over everything from every tradition because I simply don't know it all, but we are gonna be discussing smoke cleansing in its most common forms. So what is smoke cleansing? It's essentially cleansing a space with the use of, you guessed it, smoke. There's lots of different ways of doing this that can vary from very, very intricate and complicated to exceptionally simple. And it is something that a lot of people can do regardless of their budget or the magical items that they might have. There's lots of techniques that you can use with this. Now, of course, not everyone is going to be able to smoke cleanse. So I would say if you or someone within your household has asthma or any other breathing condition, if your household contains any small children or pets, because pets are exceptionally sensitive to smoke, maybe smoke cleansing is not the best technique for you, but there will be another video coming out soon that is all about non-smoke techniques for house cleansing. So in essence, it is the use of smoke in one form or another to assist in dislodging and removing the energy that you want to remove from a space. 
So what can you use for smoke cleansing? I know a lot of people are well aware of the smoke bundles or the herbal bundles that are used within cleansing, but there are so many different techniques to smoke cleansing that vary from quite complicated to very, very simplistic, quite expensive to very, very cheap. And so you can really do it regardless of your budget, as long as you have something as simple as a candle or an incense stick, all the way up to a cauldron and specific incense and so on. So, so there is definitely a good variation there that you can work off. So the first thing that you can use when it comes to smoke cleansing are what are known as herbal bundles. These are essentially collections of dried herbs that are usually bound together into a small little bundle that is then lit on fire blown out and then the smoke is used in smoke cleansings. Now these are found in a whole bunch of different varieties all around the world. The most well known is that of sage. I will say that if you are planning on using herb bundles, please do your research on the herbs that are involved, how they are gathered, where they are sourced from and what they're used for because I think a lot of people do jump into using herb bundles and they will just buy the first one that they see. When there's a lot of research that should really go into what you're buying, where you're buying, it from, who you're buying it from, and so on. But herbal bundles are found in a huge range of different varieties all around the world. My personal favourites are English garden sage. That is a wonderful smelling herb that is great for shifting out energies. Or you have rosemary, that's another amazing smelling one. Rosemary and lavender combined is gorgeous or you can find them with mugwort in them as well these are really really good for help cleansing out a space while also bringing kind of psychic intuition and psychic dreams in some cases as well so those are just the ones that i personally really really enjoy but of course everyone in every other tradition is likely going to have different herbs that they use that they can find really easily where they live or where they can get them really easily as well so these are probably the most well-known thing that you can use within your spiritual cleansings but they definitely aren't the only thing there are other options as well. The second thing is the use of loose herbs. These are typically burned within cauldrons, on charcoal discs, or often you'll find them as well in sensors they're commonly used. These might be herbs, roots, barks, flowers, or resins that are designed to assist in clearing out a space. You'll find that different traditions will favor different herbs, roots, and resins, depending on the culture and tradition. So I know that where I am in England, you will often find that the churches will have sensors with frankincense in them for a similar purpose than I would, for instance, use copal or rosemary or sage. So there's a lot of alternatives from culture to culture, but essentially it is the burning or the smouldering of herbs that are designed to help assist clear a space. So rather than being in bundle form, you can instead use loose dry herbs and burn them that way. So when it comes to burning loose herbs, this could be just a single herb that is dry. So for instance, rosemary or lavender or sage, but it could also be a herbal blend or a loose incense that's specifically designed for cleansing. I know that a lot of herbal shops, especially in the UK, do offer a herbal blend of incense that is designed specifically for cleansing. So you can use it on a charcoal disc in a cauldron if you don't want to be using her bundles or you don't want to use, say, incense sticks. So you can have a lot of variety just in the loose herbs section and you can really make your own incenses, make it your own, see what works best for you and your environment because every one is going to be different and then go from there. So the third thing is stick incense or cone incense, essentially just the kind of bog standard incense that you can buy really, really easily, both online and in person. You can often find it in gift shops, museums. It's basically everywhere. I know that in America, you can also get stick incense in supermarkets or like big home shop things. I don't know what they're called. Can you tell that I am not American? I don't know what they're called, but I have heard a lot of people say that you can get stick incense just in like Walmart, which is really, really cool to me. That is awesome. You can't do that here, sadly, but that would be cool. So for a lot of people, stick incense or cone incense is really, really accessible. It's also really cheap, especially if you can buy it in bulk or you can get it from a place that maybe sells them off or you can find them in sales. There's lots that you can buy that are really affordable, which makes it so accessible for a lot of people. 
Now there are kind of two different ways that you can work stick and cone incense. You can get stick and cone incense specifically for the purpose of cleansing. So you can find brands that make specifically cleansing incense in stick or cone form. You can also find things like garden sage and rosemary frankincense as being fragrances in stick and cone incense. So you can specifically use something like that that has the fragrance of say the herb that is often used within cleansing or you can just use whatever stick incense you have you know if you only have rose that is fine too if you only have dragon's blood that is fine too it's all about working with what you've got now this technique might not necessarily be as powerful as using the herb itself but it's definitely a step up from doing nothing. And if you are just getting started and if it is all you have available, it is a really, really great place to start to just help getting rid of some of that energy that might be building up in your space. Now, the last option, number four, is using candle smoke. Now, this obviously is not going to be as efficient as the ones I've listed before, mainly because candles don't really produce enough smoke. But if you are only cleansing a singular room, so if, for instance, you still live with family or you live with friends and you don't have the ability to house cleanse the entire space, you're only doing your room, then the smoke that comes from blowing out a candle can be just enough to be able to cleanse a space. Now, this is obviously the most minimal of the four that I've mentioned, but if it's all you have available, that's definitely a really, really good start. And personally, I would say it's better to do just using candle smoke if you don't have access to anything else than not doing anything at all. I know that a lot of people, when they come into the magical community, they feel as though it has to be all or nothing. They are not allowed to practice anything until they have all of these items, when in reality, just doing a little bit is better than doing nothing. So just using candle smoke or just using generic stick incense is better than being bad here with all of that energy surrounding you that you maybe don't want. So don't feel as though you have to be having a garden and growing your own herbs and making your own herbal bundles if you aren't able to do that right now. Instead, just take the baby steps just to try to start clearing out some of that energy and then you'll find that you work your way up through time. It's better to be doing cleansing with what you have available than refusing to do it until you have like the best of the best because waiting for that might do more harm than good if you do have things that you can be clearing out energetically in the meantime. So now that we know what cleansing is, what smoke cleansing is, why you might cleanse a house and the items that you can use for it, how do you actually do it? Now there are lots and lots of techniques. This is the technique that I have personally always been taught and it is the one that I find to be the most effective. Of course, everyone might be slightly different with this. And of course, your house and your living scenario is going to alter how you do your house cleansings. So some of you might be thinking, hang on, hasn't she done a video on this before? And you would be correct. I have done a video on this before. At the very, very start of my channel in like 2018, I have done this video before and some of you I know will remember the phrase that has followed me throughout my entire YouTube journey and that is back to front, top to bottom and out the front door. It is a phrase that I learned when I was kind of developing my smoke house cleansing technique and it is something that has really stuck through the entire magical journey. I've always remembered back to front, top to bottom, out the front door because it's so catchy and it really helps you to remember the way that you go about doing a house cleanse. So of course, everyone is gonna be slightly different with this. It really depends on your living situation. It also depends on the way your house is laid out. Obviously, because I learned this in the UK and most houses in the UK are kind of two up, two down, it makes it really easy to remember. But of course, if you have attic rooms, if you have a basement, it is gonna be done a little differently. I will get on to you guys at the end of the video. But for those of you who do enter a house through the front door, this can be a really quick, easy and effective thing to remember. Back to front, top to bottom, out the front door. The idea being that you always want to start in the space furthest away from your entrance. So the entrance is essentially the end goal. That's where we need to end up. So typically you're gonna to wanna to start at the back of the house towards the front, and then you're gonna to wanna to work from the top 
to the bottom. And you really want to make it a flowing motion as you're working through the house, making sure that you're not trapping any of that energy in dead ends or rooms. You really want to make sure that you're flowing really efficiently through the house. And so to do this really easily, I'd recommend doing like a walkthrough first to try to get the movement down so that you know exactly where you're going next. Because especially if you're new to house cleansing, it can be a little like panicky where you're like, where do I go next? Where have I already been? I don't remember. So trying to map it out by walking it first can be a really good technique to get it down. So typically what I will do is I will take whatever items that I am using. If you are going to be using herbal bundles, I would recommend bringing with you a dish to hold underneath it to make sure that none of the ash that falls off it is gonna burn fabric, furniture, carpet, that kind of thing, you know. Safety first, make sure you have a little bowl. If you need to take your time, take your time. You don't need to rush your way through it, it's fine. If you're gonna be using a loose incense or burning herbs, I would say take care, make sure that you're bringing something that is fireproof, that you're not gonna burn yourself on. Be careful and you might need to top up the incense and the herbs as you're going around the house. If you are gonna be using stick or cone incense, I would recommend using a coffin incense box or some kind of contained space rather than just a stick of incense because it will fall off at the top and you really don't want it burning anything, whether that be yourself or fabric or carpets or anything like that. And when it comes to candles, it's a little tricky, but I would say always just be careful with it and you might need to keep relighting it. So bring a lighter, you might need it. So we're gonna start at the furthest point away from the front door. So for most people, it's right at the back of the property, at the top of the property. And you're gonna want to work your way from the top of the room down to the bottom of the room. So you're gonna want to get that smoke into every corner, every area. You really want to essentially smoke out that negative energy and negative spirits. So you're gonna want to waft that smoke if it isn't wafting by itself. You can just do this with your hand or you can just move the cauldron or the container around to kind of get that smoke where you need it to go and once you've gone top to bottom you've make sure you've gone into every nook and cranny you can then move on to the next room and you're going to want to do this all the way around the top move down the stairs and then down to the bottom and then you're going to want to open that front door allow that smoke to be sucked out through the front door and then go back through the rooms and open all of the windows to really get that smoke out because what you don't want you don't want to smoke the house and then keep all the windows closed because that energy then is just going to settle once the smoke settles and once the smoke clears so you're going to want to get it out so essentially the smoke is almost a medium it's a method of removing the energy from where it's stuck and then getting rid of it. And it's very visual in the way it's done. So you are visually watching the energy with the smoke leave the space. And then once the smoke is cleared, you're gonna to want to close up your windows, close your front door and then start putting up your protections because any energy or specifically any minor spirits that you have booted out of your front door are gonna be like, hey, I want back in again. And if you don't put your protections back up again, it's very, very easy for them to just step back through. So if you are gonna be doing house protections, it's a fantastic decision to do a cleansing first and then put your protections up afterwards. If you put your protections up first and then you do a cleansing, you are just gonna be keeping all of that energy inside your protection. So you really want to get rid of that energy, get rid of those spirits first, and then go back through and put up your wards, your protection charms, anything else that you might need to help stop that energy, those spirits from coming back into the place again. Now, of course, everyone's living scenario is going to be different. So just a few examples of other methods that you can use. If you live somewhere that is one story, so it is a flat or it's an apartment, you're not necessarily going to want to put all of that smoke into the corridor of your apartment because then you're gonna set off any fire alarms, you are just gonna be a pain in the ass for everyone else that lives there. Instead, choose one room that has a big-ish window or enough windows where it can easily vent the smoke out. And instead of aiming for the front door, instead aim for the furthest point or the furthest room away from that window 
and then work your way towards that window and then come through and open all the windows afterwards. If you live in a bungalow or you live somewhere else that has one story with access outside, so rather than accessing into an apartment building, you access outside, you can then do as you normally would, top to bottom, back to front, and then you're just working on one floor out towards the front door. If you have somewhere with an attic, it is typically good to start up in the attic, down, and then keep going down the rest of the house and work that way. So you're essentially just adding an extra floor onto it. If your attic doesn't have windows, it could be good to instead do non-smoke cleansing methods in the attic and then do smoke cleansing for the rest of the house if you want to. That way the smoke isn't being trapped up there with no exit. Instead, you just smoke cleanse the rest of the house and then you do a non-smoke cleansing method in the attic itself. Similarly with a basement, you can cleanse the house as normal. So you go top to bottom and then you go from bottom to top. So you're essentially drawing the energy to the middle and then you're sending out that way. If you don't want to be using smoke down in a basement because there isn't good enough ventilation, do the same as you would with an attic, smoke cleanse the rest of the house and then use a non-smoke method in the basement. That way you're not trapping any of the energy in it. And then if you have only one room, so if you are for instance living with family or you are renting a singular room and there's other people in the house that don't want you smoke cleansing a house and you're just gonna do your room, aim for a window. So rather than using the door, which is essentially just gonna drag all of the energy from your room into the rest of the house, which you really don't want, instead you wanna get rid of it. We're gonna aim for the furthest point away from the window, from the top, down to the bottom, and then out the window. That way you're clearing the property of that energy. Even though your room is the only one that's being cleansed, you can cleanse your space without negatively impacting the other areas of the house. Because I know a lot of people will do this, they will smoke cleanse their room, but they'll push that energy into the rest of the house. So ultimately they end up dragging that energy back in again because you have to go through the rest of the house to get to your room. So instead going out a window is really the best technique. Now I know that these are not the only layouts for houses. There are literally thousands and I really can't go over all of them. But generally speaking, you're wanting to go from the top of the house to the bottom, from the back, to the front and you might have to split your house or your property into multiple different sections. So some might go out a back door, some might go out of a front door, whichever way you can work it so the energy isn't being trapped in little kind of nooks and crannies and rooms that you're having to double back through. Instead, try to split the house or the property as best as you can to allow the cleansing to be as efficient as possible because energy is going to flow in the most organic way. So if you're trying to force it through a really difficult maze, it is probably going to get stuck. So instead, it could be worth splitting it up so that the energy does flow in the easiest way because much like lightning, it will take the quickest path and sometimes the quickest path isn't necessarily the way you want it to go. And so it's really easy to get energy trapped in places that you didn't intend it to be if you aren't doing the layout quite right. So if you have to draw out your house floor plan on a piece of paper and work it out that way first, that is a good technique, or you can just do it mentally. Once you get it down once, it's then really easy to recreate it again because you just follow the same steps again. It's the first time that's typically always tricky. Now, of course, it's really important to be careful of things like smoke alarms and fire alarms. And in the UK, we don't have sprinklers in houses, but I know that some people will have apartments that have those activating sprinklers where the moment it senses a whiff of smoke, poof, rainstorm in your living room. Not ideal. So I'd say always be careful, always think in advance where smoke alarms might be, will you set them off? So typically, based on the fire alarms that we have in the UK, stick incense and candle smoke won't set it off super easily. Her bundles, typically don't set them off. I've never set mine off with a herb bundle before, but loose incense and loose burning herbs will often set fire alarms off. So it's really important just to take into account your kind of fire alarm situation. If you don't have fire alarms, 
you should. <laughs> they are a good thing to have, but it's always important to take care with them. You don't want family members thinking that you've set off a fire when you're just walking around with a piece of stick incense. So it's really important to take into account and always be careful of where they are. Make sure that the space is ventilated. Make sure that once you've exited that room and you're done, you wanna open all of those windows to get it all out because not only is the energy just gonna linger around, but you're gonna be breathing in smoke and that is not something that you wanna do. So please, always be safe always be careful when you're doing this as with everything else within the magical practice your safety is a priority and so make sure that your safety is what you're thinking about first and then the cleansing can come second I don't want anyone hurting themselves attempting to house cleanse with smoke there are so many other ways of doing it as well so if smoke cleansing isn't something that you're interested in if you live in student accommodation rented accommodation where you can't burn anything if you have birds especially birds and rodents are really really sensitive to smoke as are all animals but birds especially they get one whiff of smoke and they are like oh, and they're done for so please always be careful if you have young children pets especially birds if you are with anyone that has asthma please always take care that way so yes, that is a very basic rundown of how to do smoke house cleansing. Was it a little bit complicated? Possibly. I try to simplify everything down as best as I can. So if in doubt, always remember, back to front, top to bottom, out the front door. And I have got that burned into my memory. And the fact that so many of you still send me comments or Instagram DMs of just back to front, top to bottom, out the front door, I'm amazed that you guys still remember that. I'm amazed that some of you are still here from when I said that, because that is like two years ago now. It's nearly 2021. What is happening? Time is flowing in weird ways. So yeah, it's something that has been really, really helpful for me. I use it in a lot of different techniques. Same as if you want to attract something in, you might go front to back, bottom to top. <laughs> That's one way to do it, to really attract things in. But for cleansing, Back to front, top to bottom, out the front door. So I hope that you guys find this useful. If you did, feel free to give it a like. It really, really means so much to me. Let me know what your favorite form of smoke cleansing is. Do you use a specific herb? Do you use a specific type of stick incense? Do you like specific herbal bundles? Let me know. I would love to know. The community would love to know. If you do have any other questions, comments, video ideas, feel free to let me know down in the comment section. We also have a Discord server. The link is down in the description box. We have a lot of people on there all the time where we can chat about different cleansing methods if you want. Keep an eye out, or if you haven't already, feel free to hit subscribe for the next video on house cleansing, which is going to be the non-smoke methods of house cleansing. So anyone that lives in accommodation where they can't use smoke for one reason or another, there are other options for you as well. So I hope you guys are all staying safe. I hope you have a marvellous magical day. A massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Your names will be on the end screen in just a moment. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys. Did I say that right? Did I say that at all right? <laughs> my house is a mess. Oh, this is the only like clean bit of my entire house. Yellow. It has been like a month since I last filmed. And I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Have I got lipstick on my teeth? Probably, honestly, probably. Is this like uncomfy close to the camera? I can like shuffle back. I don't know what I'm doing. It's been so long since I last filmed. Did that go good? Did it not? Did, did it didn't was what I was gonna say. Did it go good? Did it not? I don't really know. We'll have to see. I hope it turned out okay. Fingers crossed. Thank mm -hmm. you.